It's been about a year and six months since I did my last shop tour video. And since then, a lot has changed. I was actually in my last shop when I shot that video. I've been in this space for a solid year now, from July 2nd of 2014, and it's now the beginning of July in 2015. Now, there's a couple things I said in that last shop tour video I want to talk about real quick. The first one is that I'm not really much, I'm not really a tool guy, and you can pretty much throw that out the window. I have upgraded a lot of my tools since then, and um, it is what it is. You know, you can get a lot of really awesome projects done with inexpensive tools, and buying more quality tools may or may not in increase the enjoyment of the process. And that's a decision that you need to make. I'm not telling you you need to upgrade anything or what tools you need to buy. So for whatever that's worth. And the second thing I said in that video was, which relates to the first thing, is it's not the arrow, it's the Indian. Tools are just tools. They're just gonna sit there unless you tell them what to do. So whether you do have nice tools or whether you have inexpensive, uh, inexpensive tools, it really doesn't matter too much you can still accomplish really awesome things. So whatever that's worth, don't let that discourage you. So on July 2nd, 2014, my wife and I got our first house together with the intentions of the house is pretty much hers. She can do whatever she wants with the house as long as I get the garage. So as far as I'm concerned, this is not a garage. This is a shop, but it's really just a garage. It's a two car garage. It's about 22 feet left and right and about 22 feet front to back. I've measured it a couple of times, but I always forget the exact measurement. Anyway, that's pretty much the basic size of what it is. And when I first got this space, I did a couple things to prepare for it. I painted all of the walls a nice fresh coat of white. It was already white, but it was a dingy, dirty, beat up white. And along uh, looking through the front of the garage, the, the large front door, along the left and back wall, I built a box uh, for electrical. So I ran new electrical lines specifically for the shop that were not inside the wall studs of the actual garage. This allows me to change and modify things as needed. Um, uh, going down the road with the shop. I've never had to get inside these boxes, but honestly, if I was to do it all over again, I probably should have just ran conduit and been done with it. So for whatever that's worth. Everything in my shop is on casters. Everything is mobile. And the reason being is this allows me to completely move everything to one side if I'm working on something larger. And it also allows me to completely change the layout of the shop as my needs and wants change here in the shop. So I'm going to start in the very middle with my table saw and my assembly slash work table. My table saw is a saw stop PCS uh, table saw with the industrial mobile base. And I really, 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 really like the mobile base on this because it allows me to very, very easily completely change the location of this table saw. So if I know if I'm not gonna use it for a while and I need the space, I can just pick it up really fast and push it up against the wall. This, this mobile base is, it's ridiculously easy to move. So having the, the heaviest tool in my shop be able to move pretty much the easiest is very convenient. And I've also spray painted a couple spots on the floor where the uh, extension wing supports reside in their almost permanent location. So if I'm gonna set this up for a normal task or whatever, or in its normal location in the shop, this gives me a nice little spot or reference point so I always know I'm gonna put the table saw back in its, its familiar location. The dust collection is hooked up to the back side of the cabinet with a couple pieces of flexible hose and some four inch PVC pipe. This is all a slip fit connection. None of these joints are glued and it all just kind of fits and moves and changes as it needs to change. So it's very easy to just unplug this and get it out of the way and hook it up when I need it. And the fact that it's not a hard connection, I don't think really uh, affects the performance of it any at all. Um, if you had a permanent setup for your table saw, then it probably would be a better idea to make the dust collection permanent to it. Right next to the dust collection pipe, I always have a couple of cords on the floor. Uh, the cord for the table saw and an extension cord that I keep near the entrance of the garage. 
and it's one of those things, you know it's there, so you pick up your feet when you walk. It's not really a trip hazard if you know it's there. It's kind of the same concept of your front porch. You know you have to pick up your feet to get in the door, so you pick up your feet. Right behind my table saw is a four foot by eight foot, slightly modified version of the Polk workbench. It's Ron Polk's original somewhat design that I modified to have here in my shop. And it's a full four feet by eight feet work surface, which is the first time, I, I built this like five or six weeks ago, and it's the first time that I've had a full four by eight work surface here in my shop, and the increased space that I have from this compared to my last assembly table or work table, whatever you wanna call it, has just been very convenient. I've got it piled full of crap right now. These are some two by tens for an upcoming project that I need to move, um, but this whole table, uh, has these openings below for the tools as you're working on a project. This isn't really tool storage, long-term tool storage, but if you're working on a project and you're using your nail gun or your, uh, your drill or your driver, it's very convenient to, as soon as you're done with that particular task, just set them under here and work on something else, and it's convenient to um, the project that you're working on, whatever tools that you may be using. And this whole table is on casters, so it can be rolled anywhere in the shop to um, free up space as needed. I have one of these power strips down here that is plugged in with an extension cord on this side, so any type of power tools like a sander or something like that, I can just plug in and I would never have to search for a certain extension cord or never have to worry about the extension cord getting in my way because the main line is plugged in over here in a very low traffic area. Below that is a shelf that I have my X-Carve CNC machine on. And the original intention for this was to have a spot to store the X-Carve and then pull out and put on top as needed. But there's enough space down there that I can just leave it down there, plug it in and cut uh, as it sits down there, which is what I've been doing so far. As I said, everything in the shop is mobile so you can move it out of the way as needed. And I wanted to show you the center two items first. That way I can push them off to one side as I'm showing you guys the other side of the shop. So to start along the perimeter, I'm gonna go right behind the camera and show you the first corner as you come through the large garage door on your right hand side. Immediately on this wall is my rolling plywood cart. And I just made this and it's working out really well for me. It's very easy to roll around and I can roll it outside to unload plywood onto the cart directly from my truck. And I can also roll it right behind the table saw to make, uh, to ease the uh, process of putting the table or putting the plywood onto the table saw. I don't have to pick it up and carry it all the way around to the back side. So it's working out really well and it stores all the sheet goods on the back side of the cart. Up next is my universal clamp rack and I made this so that it has a universal holder design so that this one particular shape that I cut in all the slots will fit or accommodate every single one of the clamps that I have. And this has turned out to be very handy. It's very convenient to just walk to one place where you know all your clap clamps are going to be. So I'm very happy that I made both of these two and they were actually, I think, the last two projects that I made here in the shop. After the clamp rack is my finishing supply rack and this I've outgrown. It's The concept is to have shorter shelves down here for these quart size uh, finishing supplies and also to have angled shelves up here that fit uh, spray paint and anything that resembles spray paint like glue bottles. Uh, but like I said, I've pretty much outgrown it and I've started to store some of this stuff inside my locking metal cabinet. So I may make this thing taller at a later date, but I've already made one of these on a video, so I'm not going to record it or anything like that. Um, this is my welder. I've made one welding project on this channel uh, and I've used it three or four times since then, but didn't record it. Just household stuff here and there. Uh, it's very handy to have a welder around the house for... Um, repairs and stuff of that nature. Um, that's mainly the reason why I got it. Uh, and hopefully I'll get into some more metal projects in the future. This is the door that goes into the house and this is my locking metal cabinet that I got about four or five years ago from a company that was going out of business. They said you can just have it so you can't beat free. That was a great deal. I don't have a key to lock it but it does lock. And also uh, this is pretty much a community cabinet I guess you could say. Like six months ago on my vlog channel 
I asked if anybody had any stickers for their business uh, that I could purchase. And since then I've only purchased, I think like six of the stickers that are on here. The rest of the stuff have, has just been sent to me by all of you out there. So this is a community collage, I guess. It grows every week and it's very awesome. And I very much appreciate all those who have already sent me a sticker. So uh, what's inside it is pretty much a bunch of paint and some other chemicals and stuff like that. Um, it's not really organized at all, but it's very handy to have here in the shop. In this wall, I have some of my table saw attachments, a rolling toolbox for more uh, mechanics style tools, ratchets and wrenches and stuff like that. And then also a dry erase board that I made for my wife several years ago that we never ended up using in the house. So I confiscated it for in the shop. And that was about two years ago that I put it in the shop. And the first day I wrote a clean shop is a safe shop and haven't erased it since. And that was something that my seventh or eighth grade shop teacher once said, and it's kind of just stuck with me. And I really like having a nice, clean and organized shop. So before I make any project, the very first step for that particular project is always to clean the shop. It's very inviting and encouraging to work in a clean and organized space. Taking up 14 and a half feet on the back wall, starting in the left corner is my miter saw station. And this is one of those projects that I should have done, or I wish I would have done when I first started the shop. The increase in storage, organization, and ease of use on the miter saw setup has just been tremendous. I absolutely love this thing. And it's just, it's just awesome. So we got 20 drawers that are on full extension slides. And they are all 24 inches deep. And then I've got one tray that is on 26 inches slide, 26 inch slides for my benchtop planer that I really don't use that often. Uh, it just keeps it out of the way. Now up here on the top, I've got cubby holes or bins, whatever you want to call them, for stuff that is commonly used, like my um, hand tool assortment, and then stuff that really doesn't need to be be protected by the dust like my old drill press table and belt sander platform thing. So above that is just miscellaneous storage that I've never really organized, but it really doesn't matter uh, where my ladder is and some other jigs and stuff like that. Above the miter saw station along the entire length of the wall, minus the area needed to get into the attic above here, is a set of shelves, uh, what I'm calling wasted space garage shelves. And it's just a place to store household items that uh, I don't want taking up space here in my shop. Also some other boxes and stuff that I use for shipping occasionally, just random crap. Tucked into the lower left-hand corner of the miter saw station, out of the way is my air compressor. It's a five horse, 20 gallon air compressor. It's an oilless air compressor, so it's loud and obnoxious. I don't have any desire to enclose it in some type of sound containment area or put it outside because I really don't use it that often. And I have the air hose line for it run along this back wall to the front corner of the garage door. On the ceiling, I have four eight foot light fixtures and each one of those fixtures has four four foot T8 6500K fluorescent bulbs. So this gives me a total of 16 bulbs in the ceiling and I wish I would have put two more eight foot fixtures above the garage door on a separate switch. That way I can turn them on when the garage door is shut because when the garage door is shut, it gets kind of dark in that corner uh, on camera. But that's something I can do at any other time. I live in central Mississippi where the summers are very warm and extremely humid and I don't have air conditioning here in the shop. I don't want to go through the hassle of putting insulation in the walls and I just don't think that the investment is greater than the reward for making this shop uh, insulated and air conditioned. So what I do have is a simple box fan and I just run the fan anytime I'm not concerned with the audio on the videos, which is like when I'm running a table saw or running any other tool or just doing a miscellaneous task, then I'll run the fan. But if I'm talking, then the fan gets turned off because having that in the background is extremely annoying. And that is also pretty much always stays into this corner where I store my vertical tools basically on this wall. And like I said, I live in Miss Mississippi 
but I do have a lot of Detroit sports gear around here, and that's because I uh, I grew up in Livonia, Michigan. It's just west of Detroit, and I moved away when I was 14 or 15 years old. So I grew up as a big big Red Wings fan and a fan of the really crappy Detroit Lions in the late 90s. Um, but I, I never really was a fan of baseball, so that's probably why you don't see a Detroit Tigers flag around here. And then this is where I store my vertical tools that are also on wheels I can move out as needed. This is my Cyclone and Shop Vac cart, and it's extremely handy. It's been very nice to have all of this stuff located in one little spot that is easy to just grab and move around. So on the front side, like I said, is my Shop Vac and Cyclone. And they're all hooked up together and I have all of my attachments and tools on this back side, the different hoses that I have and the attachment wands to go with it. So this is very nice to just roll to where you're working and attach it right to a random orbital sander or whatever you want and uh, roll out of the way when it's not needed. The cord on the shop vac is long enough to where it pretty much stays plugged in at all times and I can reach just about everywhere here in the shop and for cleaning up areas of the floor uh, very quickly, I can also use this as a vacuum to just suck up the crap on the floor. So this has been very handy to have. This is a 13 inch bench top drill press and it's sitting on a nightstand that I found in the trash and put some uh, computer chair casters on the bottom of it. And these casters actually ride really, really easily and they've held up really well. I've done this, or I put this whole setup together uh, almost two years ago and it's, it's working out just fine. And because this is a nightstand down here at the bottom, I've got two drawers for storage, which are just piled full of miscellaneous drill bits and crap that have no organization to them and I barely ever use the drawers anyway. Behind the drill press and bandsaw, I have a little shelf for items that are used at the drill press and bandsaw. So I've got my uh, fast cap drill bit set over here and then some other stuff for the bandsaw like some push blocks and stuff like that. Uh, this ends up collecting crap more than anything else so I don't know if I'll ever do anything with this space but it's not really optimized or organized that well. My bandsaw is a Grizzly G0555 LANV. It's their 30th, 30th anniversary edition bandsaw, 14 inch bandsaw. It's been a really solid performer. I have zero complaints with this, other than the dust collection. Dust collection really sucks on this thing, and that's not a deal breaker for me. I Most of the time, honestly, if I'm just making one or two little cuts here and there, I don't even turn the dust collection on. So as you can see, it pretty much stays in this state of dustiness. Next up from the bandsaw is my lumber rack and small pieces storage dresser. This is a dresser that I found in the trash uh, several several years ago and have used it for various different uses. It was a miter saw station at one point, planer stand slash station in two different setups at one point. It was a workbench top at one point, and now I'm just using it to store smaller offcuts until I get rid of it. This, um, like, like for instance, this drawer is a plywood, small piece plywood storage for pieces that are smaller uh, too small to fit on the plywood cart. And then these other drawers are for pieces of lumber that are too short to fit on the lumber rack. And if these drawers are full and something belongs in it and I don't have any space for it, then it gets thrown away or just put in the burn pile for my backyard fire pit. Above that is my lumber rack and this is just pieces of conduit stuck in two by fours. It's super simple and it's been doing the job just fine. Like I said, I've had this trash dresser for a long time, but if I ever decide to get a jointer, then this is the location in which it will be. And at that point, the dresser will probably end up going back into the trash or broken down and, and the parts used for something else. But this spot is pretty much the best location for a jointer in my shop if I ever do decide to get one. Finally on this wall is my dust collector. This is a mobile unit from Grizzly, a Cyclone unit with a uh, canister filter in it. And it was more of a splurge purchase than anything. Um, I already had a dust collector. It was a modified Harbor Freight dust collector, which is a very great buy, by the way. Um, but the way I had that set up in my last shop was that it exhausted the 
finer particles outside. And when I moved to this shop, I really did not want to cut any holes in the wall just for a dust collection vent outside. And I didn't want to go through the hassle of modifying the unit again to add a better filtration system to it uh, with a canister filter and a better separator um, like a cyclone. It has a thin baffle kind of thing that I made for it that really, really wasn't that effective for the smaller particles. So I didn't want to modify it at all and I just, I just got this and it's worked out really, really well. This is rated at less power performance but I don't have anything to measure the actual CFM, the suction, but just visually, you know, touching the end of the hose, this thing has a lot more suction than what my Harbor Freight unit had. Um, that being said, the Harbor Freight unit uh, performed just as good as, as my intentions or my needs. I just couldn't exhaust it here in this particular shop, so I upgraded to this. Also, all of the dust collection piping in this shop is just four inch sewer and drain pipe and then flexible four inch hose. The dust collector has two main trunks coming off of it or two main lines coming off of it. One goes directly to my table saw is dedicated to the table saw and it stays open at all times. And then the other one goes behind, behind these tools along this wall and is connected with a blast gate to the uh, bandsaw and then also connected with a blast gate to the rest of the system, which is currently only hooked up to the miter saw station. So every time that the dust collector is running, there's two ports open, uh, always the table saw and then either the bandsaw or the miter saw station. And it works really, really well. I can close one of them, but you can hear the machine kind of change pitch and be bogged down just a little bit. So I just leave them both or leave two open at all times on separate lines and it works out really well. So a year after having a completely empty garage to start with, a clean slate, I guess you could say, this is my shop. And if there's any advice I could give anybody for whatever type of shop improvement or tool upgrade or whatever it is, the best thing I can tell you is to earn it and to never go into debt over a small tool or of any tool of that nature. This whole shop has was started with a miter saw and a $200 investment from my household income to buy materials. I used that miter saw and $200 worth of uh, two by fours and dimensional lumber to start selling outdoor furniture. And since then, it has snowballed into what it is, completely debt free, all based on the work and effort that I put into it. So anyway, I hope you guys uh, found something of use in this video. Thanks for watching. And you all have a great day.